Dear members of the Royal Society, dear colleagues from UK and France, and from the United States, I have to add, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you here at the Collège de France. We are very happy to have you here. And uh, I don't want to be very long, it's just to introduce to the topic of this meeting in the face of global challenges, particularly those related to climate change, it is becoming imperative that science academies and institutions as Collège de France around the world together, engaging all stakeholders in the development and implementation of solutions. Scientific collaboration between the UK and France has a long history with close links forged over the years between our institution and British researchers and in this meeting, today and tomorrow, the Collège de France and the Royal Society will bring together scientists dedicated to promoting scientific excellence, as well representatives of politics, industry, civil society, committing to exploring the scientific, political, ethical and social issues involved in tackling climate change. And this meeting is the first of, we hope, several meetings that we are planning together with the Royal Society. Uh, there is already a decision for the next meeting at the end of the year, November, if I'm not mistaken, on aging. So this is a topic also which is of interest for all of us, not only climate change, aging, I think, is also something that <laughs> I feel it every day, but this is another topic. <laughs> So the theme of this uh, meeting, of the present conference, is building a climate resilient society. And I'm very glad, grateful to my colleague uh, Jean-Marie Tarascon and also Philippe Sansonetti for the organization of this meeting, which is a part of the initiative of the Collège de France, Avenir Commun Durable. Uh, this initiative, Avenir Commun Durable, was launched in 2020, 2021 by professors of the Collège de France under the initiative of Jean-Marie, with the idea to gather researchers from a wide range of disciplines, economists, chemistry, mathematics, history, law, and so on. And the objectives are to provide scientific answers, because there are so many fake answers, but what we like to do is to provide scientific answers to the challenges of climate change, to disseminate certified scientific data, to provide intellectual stimulation for everyone, politicians, citizens alike, and to alert society that there is an absolute need to act. I think you have the program of the two days, and you will see how Avenir Command Durable is working. We'll have insights from various scientific fields, and such a collaboration is absolutely necessary in order to get an overall picture of our situation and to elaborate strategies for climate resilient society. As you see, we will start with history, ancient history, and uh, see how climate change is in history produced innovation and adaptation in human history. And then we will have several presentations of the post or low carbon future and the importance of hydrogen. The importance of economics will be underlined also tomorrow morning. How does climate change affect and maybe even stimulate economics? And these presentations will be followed by several papers about the effects of climate change on biodiversity and our health. And then tomorrow, before the concluding remarks by Sir Peter Bruce and Jean-Marie Tarascon, we'll hear about the challenges of providing advice to government. I think this is the most complicated <laughs> paper. So I would like to thank all the participants uh, of the conference, and we are looking forward to hear and then to discuss your contribution. It's a pleasure to have you all here, and also I would like to welcome all the public that have come to this meeting. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julie Maxton. I am the CEO of the Royal Society. And may I just say, on behalf of everybody at the Royal Society and everybody who's come from the UK to be here, that we are delighted to be here. We thank Professor Roma for his generous welcome to us, and Philippe and Jean-Marie for organizing this meeting along with the people from our side. Uh, as Professor Roma has said, this is the first of a, a series of bilateral meetings. Um, we think it's going to get off to a great start. 
Um, as he also said, we're all interested in aging, and we will be a bit older when the next one comes along, but I think still well enough uh, to enjoy it. So um, the relationship between the UK and France has always been strong. It's been particularly strong in science. It's undergone some buffeting with political winds blow through, none worse in recent years than Brexit. Um, but we are grateful to all our friends in France and indeed throughout Europe to help us get over, as far as we can so far, the worst of Brexit, and we are now associated to Horizon Europe. So we are very keen to make a success of Horizon Europe. We're keen to build on the foundations that we have with the Collège de France and others in France. We have a dedicated grants programme, which brings together scientists in different air areas, and we are part of um, a system called a Global Talent uh, visa system, because we understand that mobility is so important to scientific research. So we're committed to building on the relationships that we've always had with France and across Europe and indeed across the world for science. And today, I just want to say what a delight it is to be here and to be looking at questions of common interest together. So thank you all very much for welcoming us. We look forward to welcoming you um, to London, um, where the weather will probably be awful. But never mind. <laughs> it just it remains for me to say, um, Kyle is our first speaker, as you can see. So over to you, Kyle. <laughs>